Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 7th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Here in the US, and I assume in other countries as well, at the beginning of the year, it's usually tax season. And tax season is often also an opportunity for phishing attacks to basically play on the urgency and some of the unfamiliarity that people have with all the details of uh, how taxes are being paid and how all of this works. So Intuit is reporting that they are seeing a number of phishing attempts uh, trying to play on tax time. The latest one claims that your Intuit account is about to be closed. And of course, you have to go to the phishing site and enter a bunch of personal information in order to prevent that from happening. I'll add in the show notes a link uh, to Intuit's security page. And what I really like here actually about what they're doing, uh, they're publishing all the different uh, phishing emails that they see impersonating the Intuit uh, brand. Haven't really seen any other uh, financial companies or so do it uh, quite like that. I think uh, these make a great sort of awareness exercises, uh, these phishing emails, and definitely something to sort of uh, log out for. Now, of course, uh, with uh, filing taxes, uh, one of the problems that, at least in the US, uh, the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, is struggling with is how to authenticate uh, users. In the last couple of years, they may have sent you like a pin in the mail in order to authenticate you that you then had to enter whenever you filed your taxes. The big problem here is that this is something you're doing once a year. So uh, passwords are easily, of course, uh, getting lost. And uh, you often, of course, file taxes sort of last minute. And then, uh, of course, the urgency uh, kicks in here. This year, it looks like uh, the IRS is trying something new. They partnered or hired uh, ID.me, a company that's of specializes into verifying people's identity, something that's somewhat controversial, but something that you should be aware of, that in order to sign up for an ID.me account, you need to upload various uh, forms of identification. You may also have to join a webcam call with an operator there in order to verify your identity. I do think that's something that you probably should do rather early than late uh, because, again, you don't want to get sort of in a last-minute situation where you uh, do want to uh, file your taxes and then have to quickly uh, get uh, this ID.me account set up. Personally, I'm not 100% sure who exactly uh, needs uh, to have an ID.me account, but uh, definitely something you want to look into uh, before you get sort of in that last-minute rush. And then we got news about Mac Malware Update Agent, which is also known as Wizard Update, received uh, more updates. And well, I guess that's why it's called Update Agent. And it's now installing additional payloads. Now, Update Agent usually installs uh, adware. Uh, in the latest version, the second stage is sort of downloaded from a public cloud service. That makes it a little bit uh, more difficult to spot. Update Agent also has the habit of sort of staying one step ahead of XProtect. XProtect is a fairly simple signature-based antivirus that has been in the last few versions of macOS. But of course, signature-based meaning it's always sort of looking for yesterday's malware. Microsoft has a great write-up on uh, this update agent malware and how it sort of evolved over the last couple years. And if you're using Argo CD with Kubernetes, uh, well, it's patch time for you. Argo CD here, the CD actually stands for continuous deployment, not uh, for uh, the uh, good old compact disk, for those of you who still know them. But the latest version patches CVE 2022 24438, a directory traversal vulnerability. 
This is a problem uh, because, uh, well, Argo CD, it works with these Helm chart files and uh, a malicious Helm chart file would essentially be able uh, to read file outside the repository's root directory. But this can become a problem according uh, to the security advisory is if, for example, you do have a GitHub repository that you download your project from and then you build it using uh, these Helm charts, well, um, part of that GitHub repository may be encrypted uh, passwords and uh, configuration files. Once they're decrypted on your system with this directory traversal vulnerability, an attacker could potentially read those secrets. And then uh, a little interesting uh, thing from uh, Didier here over the weekend while well, using a little uh, infrared camera uh, to identify power over Ethernet devices. One thing I have to play with is to see whether or not uh, you can sort of guess the CPU load there. I have seen people having some luck uh, with infrared cameras to detect uh, crypto miners. So I have to play with this a little bit and see if uh, I can maybe post a follow-up uh, showing how you can sort of detect uh, what's happening on your system. Um, not sure if this will work well with the little consumer crate sort of IR camera that uh, I have sitting around. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.